whereas overloading means two or more function name are same but differ in number of arguments or data type of the argument in this especially in private section we are declaring the variable ptr and to store the result si is the variable there i can able to store the result constructor it is used to initialize the object of a class whereas destructor there it deallocates the memory allocated to the object welcome back to one and all myself vasanta lecturer in computer science vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysore today we want to start with the fourth session that is the last session of constructor and destructor chapter whereas in the previous session you came to know regarding how to invoke or how to call the parameterized constructor under that explicit call implicit call initialization with assignment operator that is nothing but initialization at the time of declaration with assignment operator regarding that you came to know already in the previous session whereas on today's session you will study regarding constructor overloading as well as destructor what do you mean by constructor overloading then what do you mean by overloading then what do you mean by constructor overloading then how to use destructor function what is the use of destructor function the syntax regarding that you will come to know on today's sessions now one by one we'll discuss before starting constructor overloading what do you mean by constructor especially overloading whereas overloading means two or more function name are same but differ in number of arguments or data type of the argument for example i am taking add is a function name here int comma int then the function name here we are given as add two arguments both arguments are integer data type then one more will take add int comma float then here the class especially the function name is add and here two arguments one is int and one more is float and one more function here will take add only here one is int comma int comma int if you observe here in all the three cases the function name are same but differ in number of arguments are different or data type will be different here two arguments here also two arguments but here both the arguments are integer whereas here one is int and and one more is float if you observe first and last all the arguments are integer only but here we have two arguments whereas here we have three arguments whereas overloading means especially the function name are same but differ in number of arguments differ in number of arguments or differ in data type of the argument then what do you mean by constructor overloading whereas when the common constructors are used to initialize the data members of a class especially constructor are used to initialize for initialization purpose we are using constructor and this constructor will execute automatically when we have to create object of a class whereas overloading a constructor means specifying additional operation by passing the required argument we can define any number of overloaded constructor in a single class in a single class we can have any number of constructor and depending upon the argument that particular constructor will going to execute depending on the type and the number of arguments the compiler decide invoke of a particular constructor the compiler will decide which constructor it has to execute for example if i'm going to give two values of integer only 2 and 3 then first one will execute because both are integer format for example if i'm going to give one is 2 and one more is 3.0 then second one will execute and for example 2 comma 3 comma 4 if i'm going to write all the three are integer format then third one will execute that means the compiler will decide which type of constructor it has to execute that will explain with one example program here consider i want to find a simple interest then what is the formula to find simple interest that is ptr divided by 100 that's a formula then here consider first we are started with ash include iostream.h this is a supporting header file for c in as well as c out function then here we are given the class name is simple interest 
the class name here we are given as simple interest in this especially in private section we are declaring the variable ptr and to store the result si is the variable there i can able to store the result then in public section especially constructors has to be declared in public section only then in public section i am taking one more function that is simple interest here class name as well as function name are same here class name and function name are same here then here we'll open the bracket and here we'll close that is the default constructor because here we don't have any argument that is a default constructor without argument if i'm going to create the object then automatically default constructor will execute and the second one once again one more function we are taking simple interest only but here if you observe two values one is x and one more is y we are given it means that it is a parameterized constructor it contains the arguments two arguments it contains that is x and y both the arguments are of type flow data type then here this is nothing but parameterized constructor here we are initializing the value whatever value for that x and y see x value we are moving to p and y value we are moving to r and for time we are giving 5.5 then we are closing this function that means here one function and here one function and one more function we are taking simple interest only that means in this if you observe now it is a third function especially this is a constructor function here we have three arguments float x float y as well as float z three arguments three arguments means it is a parameterized constructor if you have one argument then also it is a parameterized constructor here also it is a parameterized constructor we initializing x value as p and y value to r as well as z value to t then we'll close this function it means that there's a first one function second function third function and next one more function void compute simple interest one more function we are taking here we are writing simple interest value equals ptr p into t into r whole thing divided by 100 that is the calculation we want then we are closing this function finally we will close the class here we open the class is it no that here we are closing how to close the class after flower bracket you have to put semicolon if you observe here totally how many functions are there first one default constructor function second one parameterized constructor function third one once again parameterized constructor and here this is a regular member function whereas here two arguments here we have three arguments from that only i can say that constructor overloading now in the main program first we will create one object simple interest l1 when i'm going to write l1 automatically this default constructor will execute without argument here we have the constructor that constructor here it will go to execute then l2 500 comma 7.5 we are given 5000 comma 7.5 we are given with two arguments then automatically the second constructor will execute two values which has which we have that value here it will go to execute then one more object we are creating l3 here here this while creating once again here you have to write simple interest simple interest and then object 3 that is l3 is the object that we have created then automatically here it contains three arguments then which one will execute the third one will execute automatically then later on we are calling the function l2 dot compute simple interest l3 dot compute simple interest it means that here it will execute this one one time it will take x y as well as for the last one 5.5 it will take whereas in this case whatever value for z we are given that value here it will take it means that we can able to use one more than one constructor in the same program itself that is nothing but constructor overloading next we'll discuss about destructor what do you mean by destructor whereas destructor is a special member function constructor is also special member function destructor is also special member function but in constructor it is used to initialize the object of a class whereas destructor there it deallocates the memory allocated to the object by using constructor we can able to allocate the memory by using destructor the same memory can be deallocate removed here 
A destructor will be called automatically when an object to be destroyed. When we want to destroy the object automatically, this destructor will execute here. Then here, especially it will deallocate the memory space which is allocated by the constructor. Here, a destroying an object means deallocating all the resources. Here, resources is nothing but memory that was allocated for an object by the constructor. By constructor, memory will be allocated. By destructor, memory can be deallocated. Like constructor, the same name, same name as that of constructor, but here it is preceded by tiled operator. Whereas for constructor also class name and function name are same. For destructor also class name and function name are same. But it is preceded by tiled operator, especially tiled operator we are using. For example, class, I want to declare the class name is add. Then here in public section, in public section add only I am taking, then it is a constructor function. Before same name I am taking add only. But here before the constructor name, if I am going to write tiled operator, then it can be called as destructor. This one is constructor and this one is destructor. Constructor means constructing, whereas destructor is removing. Whereas constructor requires memory, whereas destructor removes the memory. Whereas to write the destructor, the class name as well as function name should be same, but it is preceded by tiled operator. If you observe the syntax, see your class name. We are given the class name. In private section, data members you have to write. Whereas in public section, once again class name, same thing here you have to write. Then this can be called as constructor. Where it may be default constructor, parameterized constructor or copy constructor, any type of constructor. The main thing, if I want to use destructor, if I want to remove the memory, first constructor has to be performed. That's why first here we have constructor. After constructor, I use the tiled operator, once again class name, this is nothing but destructor. This one constructor and this is destructor. Then close destructor, then later on close the class. This is the general syntax. Because in the exam, you may want to get the question, explain destructor with a syntax and example or explain destructor with a syntax and example program also, you may want to get the question. Next, if you observe here example, because in the exam, if you get example, explain with an example, then if you write the example block, that is enough. In the question, if you're going to get explain with an example program, then compulsory here you have to write the program. See, class name here we are given as A. A is the class name. Then in private section, we are declaring int x. That means only one variable we are using. That variable can be called as x. Then in public section, once again, I'm taking A function. A, class name as well as function name are same. It having empty bracket. And here it is declared in public section. It does not have any return type specifier. From that, I can say that it is a constructor function, especially here, default constructor we are using. And here, whatever thing you want, you can initialize that is x equals 0 or a, anything, whatever you want, you can initialize here. Then, tiled operator, that same function name, class name a, then we are writing the bracket. That means this is a destructor. How I can say it's a destructor? Before the function, we have tiled operator. Then we'll close this function. Finally, we are closing this class. Now is it clear? Because in the exam, if you get the question, explain with an example, then if you write the block, that is enough. In the question, if you're going to get explain destructor with an example program, then compulsory, you have to write the program. Then only you will get the full marks. Consider here we are explaining one program to perform destructor function. I'm just deallocating the memory. Then here, the class name, as usual, we want to first start with the header file, iostream.h. This is a supporting header file for C in as well as C out function. Then class name, we are given as num. N-U-M is the class name we are given. Then in private section, we are declaring int x. x is the variable that we are declared here. Then in public section, we are taking num only. Num function here. Class name num, function name is also num. It does not have any argument. That's why it is called as default constructor here. Or you can say constructor. 
Here I'm initializing x value equals 100. Then we are closing this function. It means that I'm initializing for x variable 100. Then one more function I'm taking, void display function. It is just a member function. Then here I'm displaying c out x value equals x. Then the, in the final output you will get x equals 100. You will go to display, display function. Then num, especially before num, we have tiled operator. Then empty bracket, then it can be got as a destructor. See, this is constructor and this one is destructor. But how I can say it's a destructor? Class name as well as function name are same. It is declared in public section only. But before that class name, we have the tiled operator. Especially before that function name, if you have tiled operator, then it's a destructor. Then later on, we are closing the class. From this, if you observe how many functions are there, totally three functions. One is constructor function and this is regular member function and this is destructor function. In the main program, num a we are given. It means that here we are creating the object, a is the object. Then automatically without argument, then constructor function, special default constructor function will execute. Then a dot display, then it will display x equals 100. Then automatically destructor function will call, then memory will be deallocated. It means that destructor is mainly used to deallocate the memory which is allocated by the constructor. Now is it clear? Whereas on this chapter you came to know regarding what do you mean by constructor? That is constructor is a special member function used to initialize the object of a class automatically. There are three types, default, parameterized, copy constructor. In default, we don't have any arguments. In parameterized, we have arguments. Whereas in copy constructor is used to copy from one object to another object. Whereas parameterized constructor can be invoked in three methods. One is implicit call, one is explicit call and one more is initialization at the time of declaration with assignment operator. In three methods, parameterized constructor can be invoked, that is not bit called. Then on this chapter, you will come to know regarding constructor overloading. Then with that destructor. In, it means that in the final exam, you may going to get the questions like, what is constructor? Write the rules to write a constructor. What are the major rules? Constructor is a special member function used to initialize the object of a class. Under rules, class name and function name are same. It should be declared in public section. It does not have any return type specifier, not even word also. Then it is not possible to refer the address of the constructor. By implicitly, it will use new and delete operator whenever memory requirement is there. Then automatically it will execute when we are going to create object of a class. These are the rules. One question, what is constructor? Write the rules to write constructor. Or what is constructor? Explain with an example program. You may have to get. Otherwise, what is constructor? Explain default constructor briefly. Or explain parameterized constructor with syntax and example or explain copy constructor with syntax and example program. Or you may want to get how to invoke the parameterized constructor, explain briefly. Then on that case, you have to explain implicit, explicit, initialization at the time of declaration with assignment operator, that you have to explain. Otherwise, you may want to get one more question, what is destructor, explain with an example or explain with an example program. These are the major question from this chapter you will get. This completes your constructor and destructor chapter. Next class, we will meet you once again with a new chapter. Thank you for all of you.